Hello, it's Keith from Convert. I'm going to give you an explanation of the code for this one here uh, that I wrote. Um, I had been trying with ChatGPT, but it was getting to be too much work. And even these, and you can see this one, it's, it's not working properly. Um, and that took a lot of work. So finally, I just wrote it on my own. And in this video, I'm going to explain the code. I wrote this in CUDA. And uh, so let's get started. So it's in the 04, so it's this one right here and I'll have a link in the description. Um, so basically, the beginning of this code was from the CUDA code, so there are gonna be similarities, like for example, this area um, is, is gonna be pretty similar. Um, but basically, what we got the imports and the basic initialization. Um, you can say how many balls are gonna be in there. Um, this is, now I had to revisit my textbook, um, and so this is my old uh, engineering textbook here. And so I referenced this because I forgot how to do the uh, coefficient of restitution. Um, but the, the rest of it I knew. But anyway, um, so these are just some initializing things, saying how big the kind of arena is. I'm also doing, um, I'm not recording every single time step because I don't want a huge GIF image. Um, I could change this later if I'm going to make like a YouTube video. I could, I could let it bounce for 30 seconds and I could just increase the time steps and then just take a frame every single time um, but for now that's how I'm doing it this is the ball um, so pretty straightforward here hopefully um, the stroke and contact this is so that I could have the balls kind of almost flash when they collide um, it's not fully working yet um, basically since I'm skipping frames sometimes they collide at a frame that you don't see and it'll look like balls bounce without ever highlighting. Um, so that's something I'll probably fix in the future. Um, this is for randomization. This is how the chat GPT did it, and so I just kept it because it worked. Um, probably not my favorite way to do it, but it, it works. Um, and then, so updating positions, really all you're doing is taking the velocity and uh, multiplying that by dt, and it's just moving that far. So. This is pretty straightforward. Um, if you've seen this before, we're getting the index from this, and then you don't want to go over the number of indexes for the actual balls, because this will come through as a multiple of 32 at its, at its highest number, and uh, the number of balls might not be a multiple of 32. Bouncing off the walls, hopefully this is straightforward. Basically, if it gets to one of the walls, you're just basically reversing the velocity, so you're just going to flip the sign of it basically. And I think ChatGPT got probably just about all of that right. Um, you, you can see that uh, blue code, or the, the blue image, um, where I think they had done that. Oops. It just wasn't bouncing off balls, but it was bouncing off the walls properly. All right, um, so the bouncing of the balls. This is the, the harder part. Um, so first let's look at int main and what gets things started. Um, so we allocate the memory for the number of balls and we um, initialize the balls and randomize them. Now when I was troubleshooting this I was actually going in and saying if ID is 1 and then make the ball do this and so I was making the balls collide at different angles um, because there is quite a bit of uh, stuff like I worked out you know an example and A there could have been mistakes in the example and you probably can't read that and then B, you got to sit there and code it, you know. So um, it's kind of tedious, and there was there was troubleshooting involved uh, to get it to work. Um, I mean, overall, it might have taken me like two hours, maybe an hour or two hours, something like that. Because um, there's there's quite a bit of you know A typing and B troubleshooting. Um, and then I'm making them all different colors here, and then we're just copying that ball into memory. Um, initializing the OpenCV image and this was also done in the previous uh, code from ChatGPT at least from 02 and 03 and then basically we're just going through the time steps this is the main loop this is where it's chunking through um, and so yeah block size number of blocks I think a lot of this is from the ChatGPT code but then here is where it will start to differ one thing ChatGPT was doing was it had a for loop in here and I wanted to use a two-dimensional um, shape so that I could have an IDX 
x and an idxy. And that way I could just kind of blap through everything in parallel. Um, and so, yeah, it's calling up to, I, I just kept their order of doing things. Um, but yeah, we bounce, we update the position, then, and then we bounce the walls, and then we bounce um, off the balls. But these are updating mostly velocities. Um, and then this is the one that's updating the position. Now, this one does update position a little bit, and I'll get into that soon. And then we're basically taking the memory from the GPU and bringing it back to the CPU from device to host so that we can draw the image. And in here, it's um, just redrawing it every time, black background, drawing the walls, and then it's going through each ball and just drawing the ball. Um, shoot, I don't even remember what those are. Uh, this is probably saying to draw the full angle of the ellipse. And then here's one of the more interesting ones is ball.stroke. Um, so that'll either be a one or a negative one. If it just impacted, it'll be a negative one, and negative one will turn this into fill. And values above one will just set the line thickness of the stroke. And then this I think they were doing before, so I, I just left it. It kind of briefly shows the animation, but the big thing is that it's saving the image. And then later I can take that image, throw it into GIMP, and make a GIF out of that. There are ways to do it in C++, but they don't optimize, and it's going to turn into a big file, and I don't want that to be clogging up the, <clears throat> the repo. Um, all right, so now to the bigger kernel here. Um, so we're getting the, uh, this is really standard here, getting the, the I and the J indexes. <clears throat> then we're making sure that we're not overshooting the number of balls, because again, these are going to come in and uh, go to a multiple of 32 for the highest number, and I don't necessarily need that depending on what people set up here for the number of balls. Um, and then yeah, this is just really slogging through the math. So we find two balls. Um, we see, we, we set them early on so that the contact is a zero and the stroke is back to normal and I sync the threads to make sure that I'm not hopefully stepping on toes and then I'm making sure, hey, I didn't pick the same ball. <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, I just run right through this. Is that blue and that's white? Um, but anyway, we're, we're just getting initial values here. DX is the, the difference in X between the two. Um, the distance is used when we are, well, probably in multiple things. Um, am I using it elsewhere? I would think I am. Um, but the, the main thing is to make sure that they're colliding. Because if the distance between the balls, between the ball centers, is less than the two radiuses, or radii, I don't know, then um, then we need to run through this. So if the balls are too close together and there's overlap, then we're going to do this. And then I'm just getting initial values here. Um, hopefully you know what's going on here. Where, um, we have a VX and a VY, and we want to find out what's the total magnitude of the velocity. And so this is just basically Pythagorean theorem here. Um, we're basically just taking x squared plus y squared to get the total magnitude. So that's the hypotenuse of the vector, basically. Um, and then we've got, yeah, the radii, radius, um, theta. So this is two, and it's a tan 2. And it's just finding what's the angle of the velocity, because we're going to use it later. So this is all just stuff that exists. And then we are doing a transform. So when the when the balls hit, there's um this is gonna look like crap. Um, I have my hand on it. Okay. So basically, you're not gonna see that well, but the two balls hit, and there's a new reference frame, um, at an angle, and so you have new axes of tangential and normal. Um, and so anyway, that's what you're getting here. So. We're getting the angle of the normal. This is based on the offset of the two balls. I really should have uh, had a good drawing for you. Um, so sorry about that. Um, but basically, I, I could go into the... I'll do the math later. I guess that'll be better. I'll do the math later. So basically, I'm just doing the math in this section to um, find what is my tangential velocity in my normal velocity because that's going to help me when I actually do conservation of mass or 
conservation really of momentum. I mean, obviously mass is going to be conserved in this, although I could make one where the balls break. Um, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, that would be interesting. Um, so, okay. Anyway, I, I'll, I'll figure that out later. But um, basically the tangential is how the balls are just bouncing off of each other. Um, and so that velocity will remain basically the same. It's, it's almost like bouncing off a wall. Um, they maintain that velocity that was tangent to the wall. What's really going to change is the normal velocity to the wall that it bounces off. Um, and so we're calculating with this. This is a standard equation. And this, this is for the other ball, but I'm not updating the ball from this thread. I'm updating that ball from its own thread, <clears throat> if that makes sense. Um, and so we've got the uh, coefficient of restitution. Um, if, it's, if it's high, like a 1, it'll just perfectly bounce. If it's low, it's like if you were throwing two balls of dough at each other, they'll kind of hit and fall down. Um, and so you can, you can set that. And it's looking at the mass of the other ball, the normal velocity, the difference in those, and the total momentum, and dividing by the mass there. Um, and then I'm finding the velocity, and basically what I have to do is I have to convert those velocity vectors back to our xy world. Um, and so that's what I'm doing in here. Yeah, so this is where I'm doing that. Um, I'm going from the basically the the normal and tangential velocities I'm going from that to the xy velocities and um, then I'm also doing this is where I update the position a little bit um, and so during that frame the two balls could have actually overlapped a bit and at this point what I'm doing is just bumping them back so they're just touching um, and then I'll let the update position function actually do the um, the velocity times delta t. And then here's where I'm saying, hey, these balls did contact, so we're going to say that they contacted, and we'll give them the, the fill stroke. And then I'm making sure the threads are synced and going through and doing the, the plot. Um, and then it just dumps out all those images, and like I said, I bring them into GIMP and uh, make a GIF out of that. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. I'll, I'll probably go back through and do the actual math one of these times relatively soon because um, one of my degrees is in mechanical engineering and I, I would have, I mean these were, I also have aerospace engineering and this, this class dynamics was a requirement for uh, both. Um, and then if you want to know the book I used it's uh, R.C. Hibbler Statics and Dynamics and I've, I'll have a link too if you want to use that and uh, if you use the link I'll get a <clears throat> small percentage of the uh, profits Amazon would make and uh, I don't think you pay anymore. I'm pretty sure you don't. Um, so that would be a big help. Um, but yeah, that's how I did this. And then I'll go back to the results. Yep. Um, and so there's the results. And you can see that um, sometimes they're bouncing with that. Yeah, look at that little yellow ball. And it's bouncing all over without flashing. Um, and so that just means it was bouncing off one of the frames that I didn't keep. Because I'm trying to, this is like one and a half megs, I think, uh, for this here. Um, so trying to keep that down. And then I might make another video soon where I just let it run and do capture every frame and make a video because um, that's easier. I, I just don't want that on the GitHub. I can link to it from the GitHub. So yeah, if you like this type of content, please uh, hit like. It's a big help to me to know what you guys like and helps with the algorithm, I guess. I don't know. And then if you want to keep track, um, you can star this repo. I'll have it linked in the uh, description below. And there's a ton of other stuff in here um, if you want to pause and look. Basically, I'm doing it, every like application of CUDA that I can think of. I, and I'm kind of going from simplest to hardest, um, kind of, at least in a way. Like, Perlin noise wasn't super easy. And um, ChatGPT actually kind of failed with it. And mine isn't perfect either. It's um, And it's not loading the image, I guess. Um, what's up with that? Well, okay. Um, don't know what happened there, but anyway, I was doing Perlin noise also, and it's still not perfect. It looks uh, kind of grainy. But anyway, um, hope you guys found this interesting. Keith from Kinvert, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.